two comedians, one legendary sports town. This is Boston Centric. Oh, man. Just getting crashed into by drunks, dealing with insurance companies. I'm, I'm amazing. It's exactly how I wanted to spend the beginning of my summer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. How was how did it go with the insurance company? You missed last week because you were in a... Um, well, you didn't miss last week because last week didn't happen. I mean, yeah. It's, it, it, you know, if, if we had a regularly scheduled one and it hadn't happened, then yeah, I missed it. But I guess, can we ever really miss one of these? No, no, no. no even, even, I feel like I've missed them even when I've attended. I feel like he, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. I, I say that in a very supportive way. <laughs> uh, so what happened? You got rear-ended by a drunk driver. Yep. Yep. Coming back from New Hampshire, there's that little area in Chelmsford with like you're coming off the highway and you've got like three choices. Um, I was in the far right lane and a drunk guy decided that there should be more lanes than that. Uh, so just came up on the right side and barreled right into me and bounced into the guardrail and then bounced into another car. And then, and you have to admire him for this, uh, crawled into his passenger say, seat and told the cop, oh my God, the driver ran away. That's good. <laughs> I mean, if we hadn't all been sitting there staring at the car and been able to verify that that didn't happen, Sure. You and also, it's on like him. the driver's side was smashed up and the door was not open. So how did he get out of there? He obviously hit his friend and jumped over him. Exactly. Because he's a good friend. <laughs> did you see him punching himself for the lie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did see that. It made me, it, it took all the anger right out of me when I saw how Is much Is there going to be a court him. hearing? Can I go to the court hearing? No, he already accepted responsibility. So there's no question of liability. Mm. I mean, he got arrested at the scene. So there wasn't much to do there. <laughs> you know, when you get led away from the scene in handcuffs, it's not like you can say like, oh, yeah, this guy, he was driving perfectly. I don't see why there's any problem with him. Yeah, he probably had trouble holding to the lie, too. I think so. Yeah, he gave it up pretty quickly. Yeah, it, I would I would claim innocence to the end. I don't. I can't believe he gave it up. Yeah, by the next day he <laughs> was like, "Yeah, I ran into him." As they throw me in the paddy wagon. <laughs> if our current national state has convinced us of anything, it's just commit to the lie and never give it up. Yeah, yeah. What if he said Donald Trump reached for my wheel? Exactly. <laughs> Trump from the back seat of my Corolla lunged at my throat, grabbed the wheel. What could I do? Yeah, yeah. You ever wonder about like when the old because it's in shows too. People reach for the wheel, mm -hmm. but you still don't have access to the pedal. No, you don't. So it's not well, like, oh, you have the wheel lunging. now. Yeah, you will go mm -hmm. wherever you want. Well, yeah, but I mean, usually if there's a lunge for the wheel. You're just kind of saying, like, we're not going where you want to go. It's not, okay, and now we're going to drive in a reasonable fashion to the place that I want to go. It's, we're not going where you want to go. Yes, but I still am left in charge of propelling the car. I'll just stop propelling the car. Well, and then it's still a win for the person grabbing the wheel because we're no longer going to the place that you want to go. If nothing else, I have stopped your wish, even if my wish hasn't come true. What if we agree on a third location? <laughs> I think, and Trump being the negotiating master that he is, I think that's probably what would have occurred. What would you have suggested to him as a place? And you're like, okay, we'll go there. <laughs> uh, alternately, I probably would have just said McDonald's. Like, that's his happiest spot. Like, sir, what if I take you to McDonald's? In so many ways, it's like dealing with a really angry kindergartner. <laughs> like the things that will settle down a child are going to work undone. If yeah. you told him like, sir, I know we could go to the insurrection, but they're running a McNugget special at McDonald's. He'd be like, yeah, I don't want to pass that up. Hey, you got a good Trump. Thank you. Can you believe SNL ignored me? Never even gave me a shot.
There's a lot of comics hoping that he'll make another run just for the. You know what? Uh, it's I a good comedy not... voice. It's a good comedy voice. There are people who did the impressions, but I never heard a lot of great Trump jokes. Did you? I don't know if I ever heard a bad one. Oh, well, I stand mistaken. I stand corrected. No, I mean, it, I, there were people that had Trump jokes before he even ran for president. It was just kind of an easy it was New York accent to do. But before he was in, it was funny. <laughs> can you believe this guy thinks he can be president? And then it happened, and it wasn't funny anymore. I'm just saying it's a very achievable accent. Yes, I'm sorry. You, you are correct about that. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I found... And I think most people, Obama impressions weren't particularly funny. No. Because he doesn't, he's got a very measured voice. It takes too long. Yeah. Yeah, like the biggest identifying thing about his personality is the, uh, and then we're going to do this, and uh, which is bad for comedy. It takes too long. Yeah, yeah. Clinton impression, wonderful. Perfect. Um, Ross Perot was great because he was in a rush all the time. <laughs> that was yeah. still the best. Yeah, yeah. He didn't win, though. No, it was a bummer. Yeah. But for a few glorious months in 1992, what a time. Mm -hmm. What a time. Him and the gin blossoms. The saving grace is knowing that only two people listen to this. So, like, it's not like we're going to get the in numbers trouble. have gone down. I think from four, <laughs> we we haven't been putting out the consistent. What content. did we say? It's, oh, it's the amount of it. Yeah. Oh, but it's not nothing to do with the quality. Quality has been pretty high, I think. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to make you feel bad. If you feel that way, I'm not going to tell you no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was reading all the reviews of the podcast on the thing, and it said that you're a great interviewer. Who said that? Oh, the reviews, but they were from like five years ago. Oh, that was from my bombing podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. People liked that one. People, people got into that one? Yeah, they listened to that one. So what this happened to your so interviewing skills that? Oh, there's still, it's not the interviewer. <laughs> so who could it be? It's a mystery. All right. I don't know. There's a chance I've just gotten rusty. Maybe, maybe I'm just out of my prime. Okay, cool. Because I'm not really, well, I'm not an interviewer. I mean, we're just having a conversation. Yeah, yeah, On yeah. bombing, I was interviewing people. I was digging deep. All right. Who needs more of what? This podcast needs me to improve more or the Celtics need a wing that can score? Uh, I would love to see a wing that can score get added to the Celtics. I'm very frustrated by all the people saying we need to trade Marcus Smart. We need to make big changes. You were within two, two games of winning the championship. And really, you, you were within one game in five minutes of winning the championship. And okay. you didn't. But it's a very young team. If they had one more guy who could get an easy bucket, they win the title. Or yeah. even one more guy who could get what somebody if, else a bucket. What if, I recall you said on this podcast that Derek White only shot bad this year. Uh, that that would, turned out to be incorrect. We settled that on the podcast. Oh, that he's always I been said bad. He, he's been rusty this year, but I thought he was a better three-point shooter before. And, he's and it turned out he was always fairly mediocre. Damn it. Well, I was hoping maybe that would change. But no, it doesn't seem that'll change. Uh, no, yeah, so Derek one of them got to go. They're too redundant. You can't. Derek White does a lot of good things and make, allows them to do. He's good on the floaters. He was tired by the end. A lot of the guys on the team were tired. Um. And they were basically Golden State just knew what to do, which is they kept making him do what he does not like to do. And the rest of the team couldn't exploit that. The fact that he was out there uh, on the three point line. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't take no, he sure of. did stink. Yeah, it was a problem. <laughs> it was a problem. So, and then I'm always ready to trade. I would do the Beal thing. I would not. Who are you giving up for Beal? Well, they don't have a lot of leverage if he doesn't want to be there. 
but so, still, what are you giving up? Just picks? I multi- mean, multiple yeah. picks and match salaries. Grant Williams. Grant Williams I mean, if, plus Derek White plus. If, if somehow we could just give them a bunch of firsts and matching salary cap filler for Bradley mm-hmm. Beal, I'd love that. That'd be well, amazing. No, it, it becomes a matter of who's willing to pay him. So he's doing, presumably, he'd be doing a sign and trade. Right. Not everybody in the league wants to give him that much money. No. But, but the guys that you're talking about, I mean, we, we're going to have to give a lot of players to match that salary. What would it be? 40? Yeah. We signed Grant to 20. Do you think Washington wants to pay him 20? You have to pay somebody. I don't think they want to pay Grant Williams 20. Well, they will. (laughs) I can't argue with that. No, I I don't know. I just, I think it's almost more of a, we're giving you picks and we're giving you picks and we're willing to pay this guy this much. Not that many teams are willing to pay him that much. So it's sort of him signing as a free agent with us. Someone is going to want to give Bradley Beal they'll give Washington more than that for Bradley Beal. I mean, it might be a a situation of, all right, he wants to come here, so they're going to have to take whatever we're willing to give him in a sign and trade. But the truth is he wants the max money. All reports are he wants to get every dollar there. So they're going to call his bluff if he says, if you don't send me to Boston, I'll just sign there as a free agent. No, you won't. They can't sign a free agent, and you're not willing to take less money to do this. Yeah, yeah. The big thing that Kyrie, that LeBron, that all of them were willing to do because they made so much money off the court, they took less money as free agents to go and sign a couple of times. Yeah. Kyrie's given up a lot of money now. No, he wasn't willing to give it. You know, his principles fell a little bit short as soon as he thought he was going to have to make six instead of 37 this year. Yeah, even I could figure that one out, though. Yeah. And Brooklyn looked at him and said, you're not going anywhere. You can pretend that you're going to opt out and sign with the Lakers for $6 million as much as you want, but we know you're not going to. Yeah. Especially because the second, they're have the any... second favorite in the East right now. Brooklyn? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's baffling. That is... I mean, if Ben can Simmons short... plays. Can you short a deal like that? Like, is there some way to bet against it? I mean, because you're that, not that shorting obvious. that... Stock seems like the safest bet in history. Well, what do you do? Didn't we do oh did we do over unders at the beginning of the year? We might have. I don't remember. That feels so very long ago. It does feel long ago. <laughs> yeah, just like a, I think I was a plucky 46 year old back then. It was still full <laughs> of piss and vinegar. It was great. I'm so tired now. Oh, you're out and about. I saw you last Saturday. I was there. How did your spot go? Um, I don't remember. I'm sure it was fine. Okay. Yeah, you killed, though. I did okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a good show. Longwell was on. It was a good hang. It was a good hang. Yeah, yeah. I showed up to finally give you your book that I bought you seven months ago. Yep. How was that book? Huh? How you was know, that that's book? the thing. It's not even a very good book. <laughs> it didn't look that good. <laughs> it is a good book. You know, I, I, I bought you your book. There's a chance. Maybe we should just call this a push because I wouldn't mind having a hard copy of the book I bought you. So maybe we should just say like, you know, oh, what? we'll just keep. Yeah, yeah. That's we'll great. just keep our books. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like as much as you were like, yeah, get me that book. I don't think you're going to read that book. Is there some bet we can make now? I mean, we can always bet on something. What sports are on? Uh, baseball is a big summer sport, as far yeah. as I know. <laughs> I don't no. know about that. I listened to the game on the radio last night. They uh, they blew a save. It hurt. Tanner, the unvaccinated Tanner Houck cannot get into Canada. And it really hurt last night. We have a guy that can't. They still don't let you into Canada? Nope. No shit. Yeah. You're not coming here if you're not vaccinated. That shows how far to the right we are as a country. Because I, I go into like a coffee shop in Jamaica Plain now and you don't have a mask on. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like even the liberal pockets, liberalist pockets of here are kind of off of it. It's true. Yeah. People are just like, nope, nothing's happening. La, 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 la. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah. 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 You walk around Cambridge, you go to the studio, go do a show at the studio. Who's wearing a mask? Yeah. But if there's any disease in the world, it's in that place. I would think. Yeah. That is the least ventilated room I've ever been in. Well, that's every comedy club, though. I mean, what makes for a good comedy club also makes for a good plague. Low ceilings, no windows, people packed right on top of each other. Yeah, but you can Febreze the fucker. I don't know if Febreze kills COVID-19. It makes it smell a little better. <laughs> I mean, you're you're going to die in lavender, which is not a terrible way to go. No, no. What is the, your preferred Febreze scent? Uh, I always go for any kind of melony kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. I feel like the vanilla is very underrated. Yeah, I tried that once. You ever do that? You just put vanilla in a um, on a tray and you just cook it? No. Vanilla it just what? makes your whole place smell like vanilla. I'm kind of intrigued. Like, what are you, what vanilla thing are you putting on the tray? Like vanilla ice cream, a vanilla candle, vanilla what? Vanilla uh, extract? Yeah, extract. Oh, okay. Yeah, vanilla extract. You're just it's throwing little, that in the, to make it's everything. A little, little thing family learned back in Ireland, back when we didn't have money for candles. <laughs> I always forget about the hard scrabble Bulger history. Yeah, yeah, but we were swimming in extract. <laughs> that's where you ended up making your fortune to get you to boston <laughs> <laughs> the suppose your empire is all built on extract <laughs> have you seen like maybe it's just my stop and shop they started making like starburst and like uh jolly rancher like candles i've not seen this no and they started putting them in like the clearance of my stop and shop Wow, they're a trashy already, item. I haven't even heard of them. They're already in the clearance section. Yeah, well, that tells me that Starburst and Jolly Rancher maybe just in the clearance section. I feel like the problem is those would be such impulse buys when you go there with the kids. who are like, all right, I want that candle. And who's, who's actually going to the supermarket right now? Like, half my, the people my kids love home. open flames. They do. <laughs> If you ever actually procreated, yeah, they would absolutely burn shit. Oh, no way. I never burned things. I'm not saying you, but I think your kids would be burners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't judge them. No. I think your kids would be very happy kids. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I think gonna... they would burn stuff hopefully they would camp a lot you know what i mean i'm gonna let he she burn whatever they want good and support them in every way perfect yeah luckily there aren't a lot of wooden structures in south boston so you should be okay you live near a lot of brick oh yes yeah i think you'll be okay well wouldn't it wouldn't i be incinerated inside of the brick like a pizza um, I mean, yeah, you, that you, that's a great point. You personally would die, but I, the neighborhood would be okay. Your liability would be low. <laughs> if that helps at all. Yeah. I've almost burnt the place down a few times. How, how close did you come to burning the place down? Was it cooking? Did you fall <laughs> the fire department the kicked my door down when I wasn't home? What happened? I was hosting the burn. Okay. And earlier in the day, I had I had Yahoo answered how to cook a rusty pan, how mm -hmm. to clean a rusty pan. The true answer is you buy a new pan. <laughs> but, but they're like ten dollars. But, uh, but it said that you clean your oven with it inside of it. Oh God. And I didn't know. I thought clean oven was like, a, you know, it runs for 30 minutes kind of thing. Yeah. So I just left the pan inside there and took off to host the burn. And <laughs> so there was plastic on the pan. That was what I forgot. 
you know, so then, there, there was then, like 20 seconds where I was feeling bad about saying I thought your kids would burn stuff. And now I feel completely vindicated. So then I'm at the burn. I got a call from the, my neighbor that the fire department's here and booted my door. My door down. <laughs> and then I, I give, I tell Tom Dustin, I'm like, Hey, you got a host. I got to go. I, I didn't even know. <laughs> Dust, Dustin was hammered. He called a girl in the front, like a bitch. She ran out crying. <laughs> <laughs> so then I go home, my fucking place. I mean, there couldn't have been an office fire that ever smelled worse than this. Just melted plastic. Awful. And I have oh no, God. and I have no door. And then I asked the fire guy, I'm like, so what do you guys put the door back on? And he's like, kid, you're not going to want a door for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> this place needs to air out. I wouldn't even stay here. Oh, my God. That story is like you and Tom being so completely on brand. It's fantastic. Yeah. No, I would love I've been in a unique. Also. And while that was happening, James moved to another country with a new girlfriend. <laughs> while my apartment was on fire <laughs> i've been in a unique add spill lately i went golfing a few weeks ago uh-huh. and then i smoked a little weed with doug girton our buddy after and yep. then he said he watched me do this i put my clubs behind my trunk and then i, t- I put i took my shirt off i put a different shirt on and then i just got in my car and i drove away without putting my golf clubs in my car and Doug said there was an old lady that just watched the whole thing and she didn't help me at all. She just laughed the whole time. It's a damn shame in our society when the elderly have stopped helping young strong <laughs> men. Fucking bullies. <laughs> Look at that young strapping young man. He needs <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That is such a New England elderly woman. Yeah. Just sitting back and enjoying the spectacle. Never considering helping. One time I saw a guy, an old black guy in Cambridge, saw a guy fall off like a speed bike. And mm-hmm. he like helped him up. And like the guy started running away. And then he just started like cackling laughing. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he left. <laughs> Funny to watch. You ever wonder why we live here? Yes. Why do you think we live here? Like, as you hear, as we tell stories, I was here already. I was already here. If I wasn't already here, I wouldn't live here. No. If if you just had all the money, wherever that is. Yeah. If you just had tons of money, didn't need to worry about anything, where would you live? North Carolina. Why North Carolina? I like the climate. Okay. I could play golf all year. And then, you know, if it gets a little too hot, I'm probably, I would probably get uh, a mistress or a second wife that lives like six hours north. So you don't mean you would get divorced and remarried. You would take an additional wife. You know what? He'll be a guy. I'll go fuck a guy. That Okay, that. good. Yeah. Yeah. Change you up. always have someone to golf with. Variety is the spice of life. I've heard that. <laughs> but no, yeah. And then I just want to play. I want to be able to play golf all year round. I, re- I realize this. That would be good. But in Florida, you can't do that. It's too, too fucking hot. hot. Yeah. Yeah. That mid-Atlantic region, it's like under, underrated for its weather. Because you don't want it to be hot all year round. You just don't want it to be painfully cold. Yeah. I bet Delaware is nice. I bet. No one's ever said that, though. It doesn't get said often. I mean, my, my, <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Delaware. There are times where, like, Delaware is one of those states I kind of forget exist. Isn't it like a tax haven kind of state? Yes. A bunch yeah. of corporations get, yeah, they are, like, founded in Delaware to avoid taxes. We're at a 10-minute warning. 10-minute warning? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what else do you know about Delaware? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've, we've I literally was thinking been... this what, what yep. if there was one state that was just like hey we're great at treating heroin like if one of them states was just and then if someone's like wicked heroiny yeah. you'd be like 
Hey, it sounds like it's time to go to Delaware. Time to go to Delaware. <laughs> that would Something be like that. that would be the euphemism for an intervention. It's time to go to hey, Delaware. Listen, yeah. Bill's got a problem, and I think we all need to chip in and get him to Delaware. But they're already the tax state, so that the tax the tax right. skirting people ain't going to take too kindly to that. We need it someplace where I'm thinking like South Dakota. Um, you know, South Dakota. Here's the thing: South Dakota is kind of proud of who they are. I feel like maybe one of the Rust Belt states where they're looking for new industry, and they're <laughs> they're there already. Um, the yeah anyway well some state where nothing's happening yeah like mississippi mississippi yeah they could use an economic boom yep i mean they're already kind of close to being the heroin state Mm -hmm. yeah any of any of those southern states that aren't tennessee like i feel like all of them could definitely benefit like alabama could be the heroin state Yeah, yeah. I don't mean like, hey, everyone that comes here do that. I mean, there'll be facilities. and I know exactly what you mean. It's the treatment haven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You build a whole bunch of great rehab facilities, and that's what you're known for. Yeah, yeah. You know what gave me this idea is what I actually want to do is I want to open a motel next to an abortion clinic up here (laughs) and just have people come up, and uh, I'll cater to that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. What if the, I made what, it a water park? What? It's a, like a, a hotel with a water park in it. And like the, the premise of it is like, hey, it's cool because there's no like kids holding up your line. So it's like the pro choice version of the Great Wolf Lodge. Yeah. Okay. So are you saying this motel would have a water park? Or the clinic would be your water park attached it's to the It's next to a clinic. I know the guy that runs the clinic. Okay. Got hey, it. If you, you stay at my hotel free parking at the clinic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's a, it's a f- business-friendly environment. Yes. Okay. An open-door policy, if you will. You know what's funny is the way that you say it makes me feel uncomfortable, but... The message is very pro-choice, so I guess I should be on board. I mean, it's pro-choice. It's pro-capitalism. Yeah. Yeah, you should be pleasing a lot of different people in there. Who isn't happy? I can't think of one. The religious right. (laughs) (laughs) But when are they going to find their way to a seedy motel? Yeah, they can go fight... Go LB- stay in your own fucking hotel. <laughs> Would your motel be seedy? Huh? Would your motel be seedy? No, it's not seedy at all. It's very nice. It's not very nice. I mean, but it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, crazy. It's, you know, you're you're getting a pillow. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> You're uncomfortable anyway. I'm not going to be able to change it's not, that. That's not what's. That's not the draw. It's, it's the location of the hotel. It's next to an abortion clinic. <laughs> yeah. No, I see your point. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's location, location, location. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm on board. All right. Well, I. Th- can't think of a better way to end this week than that. Yeah, well, I mean, we can wrap up five minutes early. That's fine with me. <laughs> I can't imagine what's going to follow your motel. That's the only problem. So, I mean, so you're not going Bro- to invest? <laughs> Just send me your perspectives. That's all. We can do shows. <laughs> be a- that, that's what I need. More audiences that don't really want to be there. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> All right. You got any shows to plug this week, Dan? No. No? Okay, good. I don't have any. All Next right. week, I'll be in Norwood, Massachusetts, my hometown. Oh, very nice. Wait, you're not originally from South Boston? No, no, no. All this time, I thought you were absolutely directly from Southie. 
No, that's why everybody around here calls me a pansy. Oh, okay. Is that for out of towners or is that just me? It might just be me. It might just be you. <laughs> Even little right. kids, where do they pick up pansy from? I don't know. I mean, that's honestly, they're kind of, they're reading old books if that's what they're calling it. <laughs> is this pansy? <laughs> that's a good one. I like pansy. I think we should bring pansy. Hey, what do you do? Who's this pansy coming by? <laughs> All right. Well, look for Dan and Do you have any shows this weekend? I don't think so. James Patterson's doing the comedy studio Friday. You should come see that. I should come by. Dan's going to come all the way up from, or James is going to come all the way up from Florida. And I know I'm going to have to seek him out if I'm going to see him at all. Like there, there will be no impulse to text me and be like, Hey, what's up? You want to hang out? I'm going to have to find him and hunt him down. I think he's staying with me and I don't expect to see him. (laughs) Is, is there a chance that it's been James calling you a pansy this whole time? <laughs> well, he calls me an idiot usually. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you're in good company. Yeah. All right. So check us out. Uh, check James out. And um, we're going to edit the hell out of this just in case one of us wants to have a career later on. That's all. The funny thing, too, is that like I always worry a little bit more about the content and you're the only one who ever might get famous enough for this to be a problem. I think there's no such thing as bad publicity. That's fair. <laughs> All right. And I'm still not sure the show exists. The, <laughs> you'd be hard pressed to find a witness. <laughs> Although we do have a Twitter. We have Twitter. We, we do. <laughs> Check out our Twitter content. We're going to tweet any day now. <laughs> have we tweeted? No. No. I don't, and I forget the password. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, check out uh, check out Dan's Motel, and we'll see you probably sometime next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs> this was Boston-centric. Please like and subscribe.